that would be my first question. I could demonstrate how out of box you can uh, connect to OSI Pi data source. Now, when you have any visualization, say for example, if I'm looking at this visualization, I say file open from, I do not see anything which can connect me to OSI Pi data source because there is an add-on which has to be installed. So there's a data connector which has to be installed before you connect to a OSI Pi data source. And when you connect to an OSI Pi data source and you have that connector, this is what you would see. So you would be able to see connection direct to OSI Pi asset framework, OSI Pi event frames, tag data, tag list. Now, the point is from where would I get that data connector? It is not something for which you have to pay anything more. It is something which is already available on our community. Uh, it is something which is a free resource. So you can see getting data into Spotfire. This is a community resource uh, where it kind of talks about what you can read. And this is a free because it is shared with TIPCO community by customers and partners under TIPCO component exchange license. So if you see this attachment, here where it shows custom data source userguide.pdf and this custom data source uh, dot zip, this is what you have to download. And it is it kind of go, uh, talks about the installation, which is just a one or two minute work, and, and you would see these add-ons there on your, uh, so the moment you see open from, you would see these add-ons kind of added uh, here. So, so this is, the most important piece when you are kind of working with OSI Pi data source. Again, if you have a Pi data source, you can get this connector from OSI Pi itself. They are our partners. They also provide it. It is just, it's, it's an additional installation. Not everybody requires it. But if you have OSI Pi data source, this connector is something you can always use. Now, once I have this connector, I can, uh, I can open from, say, tag list or tag data. Let me add data table. So I'm adding a data table. And in add data table also, if I have this connector installed, I would see I would have these options here. So let me pick up Pi server tag list. So I'm connecting to a Pi server uh, and I'm connecting to a Pi production server. So you can see I have uh, the Pi server IP address. So this is my Pi server IP address. I can mention my username and password. And then based on how your Pi server is kind of installed that your Pi administrator can tell you, uh, you can connect to Pi server. You can, you, it may be the installation is you can use your Windows integrated user credentials. But once you connect, so for example, I'm connecting, I can specify which tags I want to see. I can specify the data type. So I have these options of any data types I want to get. Uh, so right now I want to see, I don't have many tags on my Pi server. Uh, I want to kind of uh, even, I don't have even 100 tags on my Pi server. I can click OK and pull everything what is there on my Pi server. So I can click OK. I can call it tag list and um, let me click OK. So it's reading data from a live Pi server, and I have this Pi uh, tag list. So let me insert that data table and show you I had the Pi tag list too. So these are my Pi tags. So I have tag name, server, change date, admin, and these are my tags. I can pick up any of these tags. Right click, I can create a tags details view, and I can pull up from the same server. Again, it requires uh, the server. I will pick up from same server with the user credentials. So you can see this is my tag details view. I'm able to kind of see the server. I'm, I have this just a single side curve. I get the numeric values. I get the TAM stamp. And there could be other values associated with your Pi data. Uh, again, if I, am a, uh, if I add another data table and I'm looking for Another way to kind of get data, maybe directly tag data, I can again connect. I can see I have only the sinusoid. I can further add if there are other things. I can search if there are other tags waiting. So you can see I have a lot of tags here. I got 5210 uh, results. So these are other tags other than sinusoid. I have, uh, they may not have recent data. Now, the important thing is when I'm retrieving tags, 
I can retrieve tags with actual values, with interpolated values, plot values, or a snapshot. I can specify what are the number of points. I can specify start date. In this case, it's minus two, it's like last 24 hours. I can specify the end date. I can even specify the time zone. So there are some things which I will be able to specify. I will be able to pick my tags, which tags I want to pick. Do I want last 24 hours or last, um, say, one day or two day? I can make those changes. Now, once I have those changes, I can always switch my visualization to a line chart to kind of see my tag values. So I have a line chart, I can see my tag values, and you can see in this case, the data I got is a sinusoid curve, and I am able to see that sinusoid curve by hour, um, seconds. Uh, I have that numeric value kind of represented here, so this is for last 24 hours, I'm able to kind of view these tag values. Uh, again, whenever you are kind of, whenever you are opening the DXP file, the data can refresh. It can always point to last 24 hours or last one days, depending on what kind of data you want to be looking at. Uh, I, this is something by which you can get data into Spotfire. All those features of Spotfire, like keeping data at source, embedded data, uh, they kind of work. It's 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 an additional kind of. Uh, data source which you will be able to kind of directly connect to. Now, not only you can connect to your Pi data using Spotfire, uh, we have another uh, kind of real-time streaming analytics product called Tipco Streambase. There also you, we have native connectors to Pi data. So from there also, in case you would like to kind of uh, look at the streaming data, or uh, the use case would be you want to subscribe for a particular tag. Whenever that tag comes, then only you want to see that data, or it may be more towards process monitoring. Uh, uh, that is where you would kind of use that. So uh, we we have that as well. Where and and it comes with samples. So uh, again, in that case also, all you have to do is uh, you will be uh, kind of able to see that data. Let me just uh, show you uh, a sample. While uh, let me open my workspace and show you the sample while we are uh, talking about this. So one of the use cases I can discuss with you uh, was that using OSI Pi connectors, we had kind of historical insights in Spotfire where we use three predictive models. So let me go back here, where we use three predictive models. One of them was created using our community exchange GBM template. So uh, one of the model was used from there. Two were used out of box. This is Pi data being monitored in uh, in Spotfire, and then this connector, which is in the stream base, which kind of subscribes for a particular tag. So a particular tag was uh, used for a particular production server, and uh, we kind of subscribed for. Uh, that particular tag, so whenever the production started, we could see that, and we could do real-time aggregations there, uh, and we could uh, we, we were already having thresholds from these models, which were then used for scoring in Streambase, and based on whenever those thresholds were exceeded, we would get alerts, okay, if this particular temperature or pH is going beyond the specs, you need to kind of look into it. Uh, so in this case, it was where we wanted to enhance the yield, so, um, and if the process, if we would make these changes after the process has ended, that would not make sense. It was more like uh, the adjustments were were supposed to be made while uh, the reactor was running or the pro uh, the process was happening. Uh, so, going back to show you uh, in the stream ca uh, stream base, you have you can write to. Pi data within Spotfire you can only read, but uh, within Streambase you can kind of have a write adapter where you can write to your uh, Pi data as well. You can get summaries. You can subscribe to a data pipe. Again, whenever you are uh, specifying, all you have to specify is your server, your user credentials, your domain, um, and depending on whatever tags are, once you subscribe to those tags, you will be uh, kind of able to see those uh, tags um, running. So. So if I run this as a stream-based application, uh, I will be able to subscribe to a particular tag, which in this, this case could be a sinusoid. So there are both ways you can get historical insights uh, using Spotfire as well as you can look for real-time monitoring, uh, process monitoring, and kind of sending that feedback back into uh, Spotfire uh, for further analysis 
um, and we can always connect to uh, natively to OSIPI. Uh, there is another way which uh, usually you will hear from OSIPI is when they kind of push their data into a, a server and from there any uh, BI tool can uh, add. So this would be in addition to that connectivity to OSIPI. So uh, any BI tool can only uh, connect to when, when they have their data stored on a server, um, but we can kind of natively connect to OSIPI. 